Good day, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Vice Squad, brought to you by the Anadromas Fly Company. This week, uh, we're going to go back subsurface. Uh, last week, we did a dry fly. This week, we'll do a nymph. This is the Montana Prince Nymph, which is a pretty solid little stone pattern, I think. Um, if you follow along with my Instagram, uh, last week, you might have seen this fly hanging out of a really, really nice bull trout's mouth. Works very well for a friend of mine. So in the vise, we're going to start with a one extra long size 14 nymph hook from Togan's Fly Shop. And we're going to add a 1 8 tungsten gold bead on there. And we're going to use some 12 watt black nano silk, which will start right behind the bead. And we'll snip that out. Wind it, wind it down to the bend, tongue tied today a little. And I'm going to create just a little ball of thread. Like so. And I'll bring that thread back in front of the little ball of thread. And we're going to grab some black goose biots. And we're going to turn them away from each other so that they flare out. Get the tips all nice and lined up like so. And I'm gonna lay those on there and try to make those legs not any longer than the body. Maybe even a little bit shorter. Put a couple loose wraps in there. Make sure everything wants to stay where it is. Have a look. Yeah, it might be a little long. That looks better. And then you just want to hold on to those while you wind forward. Otherwise, they'll slip and slide on you, in my experience. You can tie them in one at a time if you prefer. I find that more difficult, but sometimes it's a little easier. I'll reach in there and get rid of the butt ends of those biots. Like so. For our body, this is going to be a two-tone wire body on this, and we're going to use some size small black ultra wire and some size brassy copper ultra wire. I've got them lined up, and I'm going to tie them in on the far side of the hook. I like to tuck the ends underneath the bead if they'll cooperate. Just to hide them in there. There we go. Then we'll tie those, keep them nice in line with that hook shank all the way to the back. And you want to make sure your thread goes all the way down to where the biops are, otherwise, your wire wraps won't start very well. Now I'm just going to build up a little thread bunny. See that turned on me just a touch. So we'll build up a tapered thread body. And we'll, we'll leave about a bead width behind free. Just so we have room for our legs and dubbing and all the other fun stuff. Now we've got a little tapered body made and we'll grab that wire and you're gonna keep them together as best you can and just start winding it forward. All right, 
when we get to the front, I always like to take an extra wrap down underneath because it's hidden anyway. It gives you a nice spot to tie it all in. And you're not gonna pull your body wraps apart by twisting anything out like this. Alrighty. So now I'm just gonna take my thread and just sort of even it out a little bit. And I'm gonna grab one of our legs here. These are speckly orange uh, silly legs, which I've just cut into pieces. I'm gonna tie that in right on the side of the hook. Like so, and then we'll grab another one. We'll tie it in on the other side. Be fussy like that. What I'll do is I'll put the dubbing on and we'll tie it in with the dubbing around the thread. It might make it sit a little better. So we'll grab some dubbing. This is uh, some black peacock ice dub. Something like that. And you can always play with those legs and get them sort of where you want them. Now before I put, uh, we're gonna put a spun hackle collar on this. But before I do that, I'm gonna cut these front two legs. Even, just cause it'll make it easier and you don't have to try and snip through the, through the hackle fibers. So to do that, uh, first we're gonna grab our material clip. Here's a chip clip, you can use a paper clip thing. You can use, uh, there's all sorts of them on the market. Pick whichever one suits you best. Now we did have a hackle feather here somewhere. Which I seem to have lost. Why wouldn't I? Just give me a pause here for a sec, Rick. hackle feather. Now what I'm gonna do here is just a black saddle hackle feather and I'm just gonna sort of preen the fibers down so they're sticking straight out. I'm gonna only use one half of this. I'm gonna take my material clip and I'm gonna put it on there. I've got maybe an inch and a half worth of those feathers there. And I don't want to take the whole feather off the side because otherwise it'd be way too long. So if you can kind of think of that where it's going to be just sort of part way down the body and then we're going to cut that off. The feather stem, making sure to leave a little bit sticking out the other end so that you can get it through your thread. Hopefully the camera will pick that up, but that's more or less what we're looking for. Now we're going to set that aside real quick here. And we're going to spin our thread counterclockwise to uncord it and help it lay flat. And then we'll grab a bodkin. And we're just going to slowly start running our finger and our bodkin over that just to help lay it flat. You can't see it because it's off camera, but this will help your bob and it'll keep it spinning. As long as we've got a nice area that's good and flat, I'm just gonna hold it on top of my finger and grab a nice fine pointed bodkin. Reach in there and split that thread. I'll just reach right in there and split that thread. There we go, like that. So now it's, it looks like, like that. And I don't have it with me, but I do like to, so I do, I can use this. I'll use a, I'll just throw a little bit of cobbler's wax in this case on the thread, just helps some, 
hold those fibers in there a little better. So we'll put our material clip in between the thread. Get it up to where you want it. And very gently let it go. I missed a couple in that one. Shouldn't matter. And then we'll spin our thread clockwise. And then I'll cord it back up again. few of them fell out, but that's okay. We'll get the, you'll get the gist of it here. Just get that leg back where we want it. And we'll just wrap that forward. Those hackle fibers will lay over top of those legs. Like so, this looks pretty good. If you wanted a heavier hackle, I guess it's all personal, personal preference. We'll just put some good securing wraps over top of that and grab our wood finish tool and finish off the fly. One last thing will be just to grab the grab our scissors and we'll cut those back legs to length. Which again, personal preference. But if we make them about the same size as the front ones, it should be okay. As long as they're close. So we're Montana Prince Nymph. A little more involved than some flies that we tie on here, but like I said, it is a fantastic pattern and it uh, it definitely works. It's a, it's a good one for, for where we live here. At any rate, uh, if you're new to the channel, thanks for watching. If you're not new to the channel, thanks for watching. If you are new, please hit the subscribe button and the bell beside it, and you won't miss any of our upcoming content. Uh, it, and hit the like button, please do, uh, if you did enjoy it. Um, if you want to uh, check out our sponsors and check out uh, everything we got uh, online, that's fishingandoutdoors.ca and .net, uh, and you can uh, purchase all our all the uh, Anadromas Fly Company tools through the through our store, which doesn't cost any more. Just uh, helps keep the lights on for us. At any rate, we'll uh, see you next week.